That was good. I got that in slow mo. Getting all the like at least a couple of the women from USA Kills from either production or shipping, and we're kind of like having them tell their stories about how working in this industry and working with Celtic clothing and how that like affects them and what their views on it. Just to like share how like women they do have a presence here in this community and expressing their heritage and ways to do that basically. Casey, give us a clap. Was that a loud enough clap, Adam? Make a louder clap. That was good. Good job, Casey. Thanks. Throughout the years, I found I like working for small companies and working with my hands. That was more or less my... <laughs> it's okay, Patrick's editing this. Yes. <laughs> We're on to our second interview now. It's going uh, going pretty well so far. Well, just feel free to speak with authority on all your answers because it is how you feel. Okay. Cool. Tartan really is Scotland's gift to the world. And it's not just for men. It's something that women can wear and, and should. And there's still such a huge cultural connection for ladies. We're not making the women an accessory. They are their own person. They have their own identity. Got it? That's a wrap. Thank you, ma'am. Of course. Excellent job. My name is Sophie. Um, I've been working at USA Kills for a little over two years now. I was born and raised in France. I came right after college. I needed to learn English and so I came as an au pair. I used to make costume for a theater. So this lady approached me to make costumes, clothes for her children with uh, a Welsh tartan, her family tartan. So this is how I found out about USA Kilts because she had got new cloth from here. My mother, my grandmother, my aunts taught me how to uh, sew when I was little. So I've been sewing pretty much all my life. Every kilt is different. Every day you work on a new tartan, different accessories. It never gets boring, really. There are lots of challenges. Sewing tartan is not that easy, actually. I really improved my skills. It took a while to master. The reward is to see the final product. I really love, you know, after working all those steps from the cloth to the final product, the kilt. That's the most rewarding for me. I did not know much about the culture itself. I've learned so much about tartans and about wearing the kilt. I love Isle of Skye, anything in the deep greens or the deep reds, I like that. My children keep me busy still. <laughs> My youngest has a mini kilt and she actually wore it yesterday at school. <laughs> Sewing is mainly my passion, one of my passions, yes. Everybody gets along great. Everybody's very friendly. It's very pleasant to come here and work every day, I have to say. The quality of the projects that we make here. If you come to the shop, you just want to look at everything and you want to buy everything. In Africa, Tartan has arrived. Let's go check it out. Let's check it out, just you and check me. Check it out, check it, check it out. Ta-da. Ooh. Is that good? Ooh. Is it really? Ta-da! <laughs> That's not it. That Wait looks a minute. Nothing like it. Oh, it looks just like the digital touches. Wow. Yeah, that's kind of a. So this is the Glen Affric Tartan. Okay. The Glen Affric Tartan is Scotland's newest, oldest tartan. The sample piece was recently carbonated um, to the like, 1500s. The sample piece. The sample yeah, piece. Yeah, basically it was, it was stuck in a peat bog in Glen Africa, and they found it 
in the 1980s while they were clearing land for reforestation, and uh, it came to the SDA with like no no data on it at all. And then so finally it kind of just sat around, and then they got around to the idea of well, let's actually do some research on this because I guess it was the VNA. Yeah, James at VNA Dundee. Yeah, I was hoping for a, an old piece of tartan for an exhibit, so that prompted a whole process, which became a quest, which became kind of freaking amazing. So possibly 1520, if you if you take the spikes in the data literally, it's it may be yep. like Tudor England, you know, Tudor <laughs> Tudor era Scotland. So I like it better than I thought it was going to. I thought it was yeah. going to feel like it was kind of like bleh, but it's. I, I, it's nice and earthy and autumnal. I could see myself doing this one for sure. I could absolutely see you. Yeah. I could see Mac. Mac for sure. Allie. Yeah. Want to do this one? Yeah. Reminds me of the uh, was it McMillan dress? A little bit. Kind of McMillan dress muted. We've often joked about yellow and red tartans being like ketchup and mustard, spicy mustard, and smoked ketchup. <laughs> I've go. seen barbecue sauce. Fair enough. Yeah. Fair enough. Yeah. Yeah, like the barbecue sauce and yeah, the, the green pops a lot more than I was expecting. Yeah. Actually. Yeah, yeah. I think that's I think that's kind of fascinating. Yeah, I saw it at the trade show over in Glasgow. There was a good amount of buzz about it. They just put out their press releases on the Monday. Um, people talking about it at the trade show. There's been a lot of buzz about it online because it's finally, you know, here available to purchase. Um, they actually yeah. ran out of the cloth immediately. It's a great opportunity for folks who are Scottish, but either aren't you know members of a clan or you know historically members of a clan or just don't know what yeah. clan they're associated with yeah. to kind of connect with their Scottish history. Mm -hmm. And this this tartan is pre-Jacobite, pre-clan yeah. right. tartans. Right. There's this a history is, and story to this, even it, if it's brand new. It is pretty much the only extant example of a pre-Jacobite tartan. Yep. That we have a true tartan as opposed to checky cloth. Right. Also, cloth that, was, that used dyes as opposed to just using different shades of wool from different sheep. I want to see this as part of a tweed outfit. This is, there's so many different yeah. tweeds that this look freaking phenomenal with. The fact that it was pre-spinning wheel and how fine the individual thing, we're using the drop spindle to actually you know create the strands of yarn, single ply yep. yarn, but yep. it was, they were using the drop spindle and the consistency that they had on those individual threads of yarn, a master drop spindler. <laughs> makes this distinctive from a modern tartan to me is the color palette. You don't see a lot of tartans that look a lot like these colors. Mm -hmm. The overall pattern feels like it could be contemporary enough. It feels like it could fit in with a new collection <laughs> from House of Edgar. <laughs> All these are new designs. What this one is a very Mackay type vibe to it. Yeah. Like a Mackay weathered almost. I do like it. It's, I like the, really? the gray and blue. I like this one for how distinctive it is from most yeah. other color palettes. Yeah. Yeah. I don't like that. They're, they're playing with color, and they're trying right. to expand the yeah. realm of what to is their possible. To their Correct. Uh, this one feels like it's got MAC all over it. Yeah. Uh, it's got browns. It's feels, dripping with MAC. Yeah, it feels like a flannel shirt. All right, so moment of truth, how would you guys pleat this? I if I'm doing it, I'm doing an eight yard kilt, and I would do it to the set. Yeah. yeah. Um, it's, this is gonna, you gotta, if you're doing it to this stripe, um, which is my preferred of the two, mm -hmm. you gotta love that yellow color. Yeah, yeah, I do it to the set as well. Just so you get all of the flavors, you know? You wanna get your spicy brown mustard and you wanna get your barbecue your, uh, sauce. Barbecue sauce. Gourmet pickles. Yes. Yeah. Ultimately, I think it's a winner. I think they'll, I yeah. think they'll do well with it. I, I think it's great. I'm happy that it exists. I'm happy that it's come back. I'm happy that when I first saw it, thinking like, you know, oh, I really hope they do some of this. I really hope somebody starts weaving yep. it. I'm psyched. Woohoo! And scene. Fade to black. Hey, Jace. Oh Lord. Here we go, buddy. Oh, gosh. It looks like today I'm gonna be drinking some Bal Blair 12 year. Okay. <laughs> this one's just like really acidic. It's like burning my entire mouth. This is three out of 10, I wanna say. Not great. <laughs> when I first said, I wanna make him gag on camera and react to whiskeys, what did you think? How has it gone as a piece of content? 
I thought it was stupid. <laughs> <laughs> In fairness, it is. Yeah. Yes. And I was happy to be proven wrong. I mean, it's still stupid, but it's the good kind of stupid. What kind of comments do we get on the videos of Jason's faces? Jason needs to learn how to drink whiskey. We're working on that. That's the whole show. Usually people recommend a whiskey. Uh, we usually get a lot of, is Jace single? It's strange. Strange. I went from being a pharmacy tech that was like, you know, barely saw the light of day or anything, <laughs> to now my face is getting broadcast all over the internet. It's, it's wild. Nowadays, whenever I see negative comments in there, I just kind of brush it off at this point. Um, it's supposed to be a silly, it's supposed to be a stupid like little bit. A little bit of a taste I've kind of been developing. I found that I like more of the peatier, kind of smokier blends occasionally, the Octomore or whatever, where it was like straight up a campfire, like I was just <laughs> drinking it and it burned, it was like, it was really violent, but I liked it after. I went back in for a second sip, I wanted some more honestly. <laughs> I like the fact that a bunch of the times whenever I'm talking with a customer out in the store or I'm talking with a customer over the phone, they'll mention something about the YouTube videos and then they'll throw in something like, oh, I like seeing their face or whatever. Or like, oh, that was a really nasty one after. And it's like, it really helps me feel like I'm connecting with the people that I'm talking to. Try new things. You don't know if you're gonna like it until you actually go out and try it and you experience it. You try what you don't like, what you do like. You have to find out what works best for you. Amen. Preach it, brother, preach it. Hell yes. I was getting cards for my wife and my daughter for Valentine's Day. I found one that was too good for sewing. I'm like, well, we gotta get that for production. It would be weird if I got a card and gave it to one person in production that says, I love you so much. Oh so God. we're gonna collectively as a department, give them collectively as a department a Valentine's card. Oh. I love you so much. Boom. <gasps> Holy, okay, that's cool. <laughs> yeah, I get it, right? Yeah, okay, okay, that's cool. like, I just bought it, I didn't have a plan. I'm like, you doing yeah. something with this. <laughs> What should I even say? Thank you, I was for letting... you. Sorry. <laughs> Thank you for letting us bother you all the time. Sure. department has collectively gotten your department a Valentine's Day card. Who would like to open it? <laughs> Alright, it says, I love you so S-E-W much. Oh my gosh! <laughs> it's a pop-up! That's cute. Oh, oh, whoa. Hold for note. Alright, everyone, it says, thank you for letting us bug you. Ha! You keep me in stitches. Just me. <laughs> <laughs>